Perseverance has now collected its first samples of regolith, which includes sand and dust that have traveled the globe and accumulated toxic salts. This is the stuff that all travelers to Mars will encounter, but how bad is it? On this episode of Mars Guy. In late November, Perseverance returned to sample the same mega ripple that it had worked on previously. Here's Mars Guy for scale. Why it wasn't sampled the first time is unclear, but it may have something to do with the struggle to seal a sample tube, which I presented in the last episode. In its previous visit, Perseverance made a wheel scuff to expose interior materials. This revealed fine sand mixed with dust armored by a coarse lag of pebbles, a scientifically ideal combination of globally average Mars and local materials. Perseverance has a drill bit specifically designed to collect regolith. It's got a hollow tip with two little windows and a tooth and flute design that helps move material into them. The sampling operation still uses rotary and percussion motion, but the drill stabilizers don't have to be pressed onto the surface. Two and a half minutes later, the pile and hole have grown and vibrations have caused some minor slumping and collapse in the wheel scuff. Nearly three minutes later, the bit is retracted from the hole, then the drill is lifted away. Note the accumulation of material on the outside of the bit. This falls off during the short percussion operation used to level the sample inside the bit. Now, if you look closely, there's a very slight darkening of the surface just beyond the hole. I suspect that some of the material on the bit arrived there courtesy of a gust of wind, providing a bit of bonus science. The drill then gets flipped up and operated in this position to move the material inside the tip down into the sample tube at the other end of the bit. The tube is transferred out of the bit using the same process as any other tube and undergoes the same inspection with the cache cam moving through its focal point in one centimeter increments to gauge the sample depth. Then it's off to the volume station where a probe measures the depth then back to cash cam for a final look. Turns out that all that action agitated the sample enough to drive the small pebbles to the top. A nice example of the Brazil nut effect. Google it if you don't know. Those pebbles are locally derived, likely bits of sedimentary rock from ancient Lake Jezero, so more bonus science. A second sample was collected, completing the most expressive face yet created by Perseverance. The wide-eyed look is appropriate given that this material may be the most important for looking ahead to sending humans to Mars. We already know that Martian regolith can contain perchlorate salt, a toxic substance that can impair proper thyroid functioning. If it's in dust, it likely will get into habitats via dusty spacesuits like the Apollo astronauts experienced, requiring more rigorous mitigation efforts. But there's also a positive side to perchlorate. It could be a very useful resource. The four oxygens stuck to chlorine that defines all perchlorates could be a source of breathable oxygen using energetically efficient enzyme extraction. So the hazards and benefits of Martian regolith will be evaluated upon return to labs on Earth, which makes this dirt more valuable than gold 